Good morning, YouTube. My name is Amos Bro. Today is June 29th, 2017. How are we all doing? So today we are going to be discussing um, the anime seasons. And I'm going to ask a question which um, I think is actually a very interesting one. How many people both in my audience on YouTube, on Twitter, on Tumblr, where? How many people have found that over the past few years you become really selective about the shows you watch? What I've noticed is, for, this is my fourth year, every show that I have, every show that I want to watch for the past three years actually have been backloaded into October. Okay? Think about that for a second. October. Like... I've looked at every show. I went and I looked through every show. And none of the shows really that were up for um, summer really gripped me. Now, you could say, well, that's just you being picky. A lot of truth to that. A lot of truth. But I do wonder sometimes if maybe I, and maybe some, some of you, end up taking the Western mentality of watching anime. Uh, let me explain that. So, <clears throat> for those of you who don't live uh, in the U.S., I'm going to tell you this, and this is the way things generally work. Okay, like, and we're talking like the main networks, which would be like your CBS, your NBC, so forth. <clears throat> when you go through a year, there's four seasons. There's, we'll, we'll start with fall. Fall, winter, fall, excuse me, fall, winter, spring, summer. Then we go back to fall. Okay? In this country, the fall season starts around September. The winter season starts, eh, we'll say December, maybe. It's about December when it, that, that TV season starts. Then you get the spring season, then you get the summer. When you get to the summer, it's weird because even though that's the middle of the year, the way it works with some TV networks here is they'll air the summer reruns and people tend to either check out on TV, hell, as we know now, people check out on their television as it is now. Most people are using either Roku boxes, uh, Sling TV or whatever service they use. I recently just got a Roku box. Um, anyway, it's always interesting to me when maybe as we get older, we either A, lose grips with what we want to watch on TV or what's on the actual TV that we watch versus what becomes a more widely available, say, on the internet. Be they a current show or be, be they a show we haven't seen in 20 years. Now why do I bring this up? When you look at the way um, anime studios do it, they will do shows which sometimes are themed around the year. For example, uh, Yuri on Ice is technically speaking a 
winter show, well, so in this case, fall winter, right? So they did what? Ice skating. We have a show called Dive that recently just started, I believe, or is, st or is starting. Well, that makes sense because it starts in the June-July period. Do you get what I'm saying? There was that, there's that anime, there's that rugby anime. Oh, yeah, that was in October. Well, that makes sense because I think they play that sport, uh, rugby, around October, around the fall seasons. But what's interesting to me is I've developed a very interesting mentality the past couple of years where for the most part when it comes to the winter season the winter and spring season I tune out and then either the summer season or the fall season I end up coming back. Now why is that? I've never figured it out. Maybe that westernized mentality that I developed watching TV has permeated into my other viewing. It shouldn't have. They're two different, they're in effect two different genres. So why is that? And am I the only one that's ever had that happen? Like, there are people I know on Facebook, we'll mention them by name, but there are people I know on Facebook that, um, how do I explain this? <clears throat> they told me they have a bunch of animes they're going to watch during the summer. Okay. I can't remember all the ones I watched that one year when I watched like six. I know Tokyo Ghoul was part of it. And I watched that also during the winter the following year, Rude A. And I also watched, um, uh, what was it? Jedi Art Defense Club, the first season. What I noticed that year was the s summer and the summer of 20. I want to say 2015, 2014, 2015, 2015. Um, the summer of 2015 and the winter of 2016 were loaded. <coughs> Excuse me. Heck. <coughs> Ooh, I'm sorry. Heck, the spring of that year for me was really loaded. Because, I mean, if I remember correctly, in 2015, or in 2016, we had United Defense Club. We had the Sailor Moon reboot that was going on. Kuroko's Basketball was getting ready to start up. We had a lot of animes between, between then. Well, then what happened? Then we get to 2016. All the anime, I, I literally skipped the summer, but I couldn't tell you why. Was there nothing on that I really that really interested me, or was I just burnt out for, for, for the past, you know, couple of anime seasons? I don't know, because when we got to October and I was watching frickin' um, K Missing Kings, oh, no, not Missing Kings, Return of Kings, I'm sorry. That was amazing. Do you know what I'm saying? Then we get to this past years. Golly, look what was in there. You're, uh, by the way, to the people who say that th this past year for anime was kind of weak, I would like you to re-examine what October had. Yuri on Ice, which was the runaway hit, some more you it shouldn't have been. Um Ununa Prinsama Maji Love Legend Star All Out Right Magic Keon Renaissance Classical Lloyd And I believe that was all. Oh well, I mean oh and I think we also have Bungo's Three Dogs, the second uh season. 
And I believe also Trickster. I don't want to forget that one. That was out. We had a lot of animes. To say that, put it this way, to say October or this, the anime season was weak, okay, you can make that argument up to up to October. When you got to October, how in the world... You're, now, of course, I haven't watched a lot of the other animes yet. How in the world Yuri on Ice blew everything out of the water is beyond me. Because, put it away, I could go back and probably watch every fucking anime from that from that particular period. The fall period? Good grief. I, I, I don't get it. Oh, and we also had, I forgot, I believe, um, the very brief third season of Haiku came out, too, right? So, I mean, it's like, they backloaded the entire year with those animes. Now, this year, I haven't been keeping up on a lot of the big ones, or a lot of animes, because why? Because we had the build-up that was coming. We, we put this way, we had a lot of good free stuff going on. We had, um, we had the Quartet Night concert, which happened in March. We had Six Stage, which is now known for the infamous train wreck on day one. We just had the seventh anniversary. The seventh anniversary. We're going to have in September the special stage, an exhibit, and we may, if all reports are correct, are correct, be getting the movie in December. Well, it'll be coming out in Japan. I don't know if we'll be getting to see it in December, but that movie will be out in December. So, whether or not people want to believe it or not, this year, as far as anime coverage goes, it's been tricky because looming in the background since March, so for three months already, soon to be six, has been Utina Prince-sama. Like, whether people want to believe it or not, okay, sales-wise, of the two, you're a nice dominate. We got that. And they're getting a movie, which, congratulations. Um, but, Udapri has been like that series where it's like, you want to get invested in other stuff, but you know in the back of your mind you have Udapri to think about. You just do. You live, breathe, eat, sleep, it at this point. It, it's not like it's a it's a gray cloud or anything, but it looms over everything else. So it's like you want to get hyped. For, now, don't get me wrong. October. Oh, we need to talk about October because here we go again. It's not it's not backloaded like. Last year's was, last year's was like legendary. But we have this year, Code Realize finally is getting its anime. And we have uh, Suki Pro, which I'm going to be watching. Sukina Pro. Now, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but three years. Three years, we, we get this situation where October really boosts up the anime season, the anime schedule. Are we saving like a lot of really big ones for the end? And like I said, because I don't want to forget it, December, if it's true, is the Udapri movie. The end of the year does it again. What's going on here? Like, 
when is the last time that you can remember without question October had to, had some heavyweight titles in it. Some will say that Magic Hill and Renaissance and Classical Oil wouldn't necessarily, aren't necessarily or shouldn't necessarily be classified as heavyweights. I'll argue the other I'll argue the other way. I did not, I have not ever seen last year in October where you loaded that many big name series that people were getting pumped for because when I heard Magic John Renaissance I was excited. When I heard Classical Load after I read about it for a bit oh I was pumped. When I heard obviously about you Dupree that was a big thing that was also a big worry of mine as everybody knows. Yuri on Ice everybody I was excited about that one okay since March. Now it got tempered a little bit, but I mean, was it bad? No. Oh, maybe I was a little harsh on it. But I had higher expect. I think I had some higher expectations, and I think I was a little bit harder on it because of those expectations. Part of my job, unfortunately. But when you look at the way we cover, I mean, there are people that can do it year round. Well, they have. I should be covering it year round. But the thing of it is, is if the anime season to me just doesn't look appetizing, what am I going to dig into? Because to me, it's like, here's the way it should be in many respects. Winter season is your starter, your appetizer, gets you ready for the you got some you got some good titles, but you're not really trying to blow everybody out of the water. You start ramping up a little bit when you get to, this, to the spring season, where things are really starting to cook now. You're really starting to build up the anticipation because you know the summer season's gonna blow everybody out of the water. You just know it. Factual. And then when you get to October, you can kind of lay off a little bit. You need you can take your foot off the gas pedal. To me, it's been the other way around. October has been where that powder keg is, where where that explosion of series is. And I'm wondering, without question, are we getting to the point where we're going to have to start looking at October every year because of what's going on in the anime industry. But maybe that's just me. That's my opinion. Everything I just said is my opinion. Okay? Everything. Now my question to you is... Is this a sign that Anime studios are focusing more on the end of the year to go out with a bang, or is it me or do other people also have this situation where they adopted some of a Western mentality for their their anime viewing, where they start to be way more selective with what they watch than they used to be, maybe oh I don't know three year, three or four years ago. Let me know what you think in the comments because this would be an interesting topic to talk about. And I've been, I've been curious about this for a while because I can tell you for at least the past two years before I took, when I just completely took the summer off and I came back in October, it was weird because Remember, that was the time three years ago, three or four years ago, when I was really, really, really getting getting down and dirty with it, getting ready to watch a lot of major series. So my question is, what's going on? Is it me being selective, or are the anime studios really focusing on that three-month period from 
well, truthfully, two, from late September, early October to, to December. Let me know what you think. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Y'all take care. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, my friends.